Howdy folks, El Corex here, and welcome to Thoughts from the Inner Sphere, episode 32. And today we're going to take a little break away from talking about Mexican, individual Mex that is. Uh, just talk in general about some tactics and things you can do to help mitigate damage. You know, it's kind of a, <coughs> how do you say, a concept that takes... It's easy to look at, and sometimes it's just hard to put into words or have someone grasp what you're trying to say. Um, if you've been playing any type of war games over the years, you kind of get an idea what I'm going to be talking about. But basic tactics are things you can do to help your team win, um, Use kind of like a power play if you know anything about hockey or anything like that, where you you can you have your enemy team uh, say really when you're playing hockey, eh, I guess you could look at them as the enemy. You know, just say your opponent on the other side, and you have an advantage, and you're trying to exploit that advantage. And the advantage is, is let's say in like a power play, you have one more player on the ice than your opponent does and you're able to maneuver the puck around um, better and possibly have a better chance of scoring because they have less defenders all right <coughs> and the same thing can be said in battletech and you look at it in this kind of in that generalization is what can i do to <laughs> give myself my own power play we may start off with the uh, same number of guys on both sides, but you are able to use the terrain to your advantage and focus down on somebody and start knocking off mechs that suddenly you give yourself. There with down one mech, you have an advantage. So now you can exploit the initiative phase you can exploit the fire phase because you have more mechs than they do you decrease their amount of firepower it may be the you know, the first shot salvo you may have that uh blackjack in the back fires the uh, two ac2s gets two hits lucky needing 12s he's just firing because what the heck you know i need 12s but you know i got a lot of ammo for this thing <clears throat> and Scores a hit, gets a rolls the snake eyes to see where they hit. Oh, center torso chance critical and rolls box cars and blows out an engine, or hits an ammo bay that might be stored in the center torso, and suddenly you have an advantage. Or another advantage is you look at the terrain, and you say, all right, if I can channel my opponent to here, he's going to be going slow through that area, and I can maximize my firepower and speed and get around them around the flanks that type of stuff and that's it just at times you just have to take a lot of games to figure out what you're doing because in the beginning a lot of players will just go up and say hey let's march forward you know it looks like napoleonics and you're marching forward and you get to a bayonet range and you charge each other and you're kicking and punching and stuff and you can win or lose the game long before you get to that point because if someone looks at it and they're able to exploit something and maximize their ability to do the most amount of fire on an appointment and next thing you know they're down one mech then two mechs then three and then they realize they're, okay we're gonna have to do a Kaufman retrograde here and uh, start backpedaling if you don't know what a Kaufman retrograde it has to do with Star Trek in a way. All right? Just let it, leave it at If you know what that is, put it down below. All right. Now, there's one other thing I like to do is I look at the terrain. I look at what kind of advantage I can exploit it. And then I do what I call the rolling barrage or the rolling attack. And that means, now let's just explain this to you. All right. I see I can exploit you and get maybe a 5 to 1 or a 6, or not 5 to 1, let's say a 2 to 1, or 
a uh, three to two type advantage where I have a slight amount of advantage in firepower against a single mech. And what I'll do is I'll fire on that one mech. You concentrate fire, which is a good tactic in, in Battletech, is trying to just scrape off all the armor. And then you look at it, it's like, all right, I have this mech, this mech, this mech has two AC-10s or an AC-20, and these guys got PPCs and large lasers, and I got this mech over here, and he's loaded up with a bunch of SRMs or um, LRMs. And I have a good chance of scraping off the armor with these mechs, and then this guy follows up with a better chance of criticals. And blowing out systems, and when you can blow out systems, you can take a mech down pretty quickly then. Especially in the 3025 era where we don't have case. You know, what's case? I don't know what case is in the 3025 era. Doesn't make any sense. I've never heard of it before. So you have all these ammo bays that are just open, so when they hit, that ammo explosion is going to rack right through the entire mech. Like in 3050 when you have case, that just that torso is going to blow out. All right, And the pilot just takes his two hits on because of the ammo explosion. Now, what I call a rolling attack or rolling barrage is, is I have my follow-on mech. Right, I hit you, pile drive into you, knock you down. Uh, peel a bunch of armor off you, you're going to hit re return strike, and one of those mechs you're going to focus on. All right, that mech that got focused on, what am I going to do with him? Am I going to leave him in the front, or am I going to move him off to the side and allow him to stay active in the battle longer and roll somebody else up? See, this is what you understand what I'm saying here. I'm rolling somebody, it's like hit. Move out of the way. Hit, move out of the way. I'm going to always try to keep my mechs in the battle. Too many players I have seen over the years want to have their mech parked right on the front line until it gets kicked down, beat down, and totally destroyed. And what good is a totally destroyed mech going to do you? What can you do with a mech that has no armor but still has all of his operational weapons? Until he's dead, or those weapons are destroyed, he is still equivalent of operational. He can still do a lot of damage to you. And if I move him off to the side and get him basically out of your line of fire using whatever cover and terrain I have, or putting another mech in the way so you can't charge him, and put other mechs that are more of a threat in your face. Are you going to be more threatened by, a, say, a rifleman or a battlemaster? So just, just think about that. If you have a battlemaster in your face or a rifleman in your face, what are you going to do? Who's going to be the bigger threat? The battlemaster. You're going to look at the rifleman <coughs> and think, oh, geez, he can't do a lot of damage to me. And if he does, he's probably going to cook himself. All right, so I'm not worried about him, but that battle master is going to be a bigger threat. So what am I going to do? I'm going to be th focusing on that battle master. So after a turn or maybe three, somewhere one to three turns, that battle master is going to be hurting, right? He's going to have a lot of armor ripped off of him. He might have an arm gone or something. So what? Am, what's your are you going to do? Are you going to leave him in that fight and still trying to punch, kick, or whatever? Or are you going to retrograde him out of the battle, move him off to the side, and then move up, let's say, an Orion or an Awesome or something else and take the, the tip of the spear? He's going to be the new tip of the spear that people are going to focus on. Oh, it's like, oh my gosh, he's the threat. This works because it one part of Battletech is psychological, all right? If you can get into your opponent's head and f make them focus on something, you can control the events that you want to happen. Now, you can't control the lucky hit, like I said earlier, where the black jacket from across the table takes out somebody. You know, you, you can't control that. It's just That's just the odds. You know, you're playing the odds. <coughs> but if you do everything else right... 
and things work your way that you think they should, you're going to win the battle. Now, suddenly that, let's say you used an Orion to move up. That Orion is now getting pummeled. What are you going to do? Are you going to leave him there? Or are you going to move him off the side and then follow the same job as the uh, battle master that had previously and move somebody else up into that position? So you see what I'm doing? I'm just rotating the amount of damage. You're doing a lot of damage to my mechs, but I'm rotating the amount of the fight. This is called the rolling attack. I am roll this guy out and put a fresh one in. New guy for the meat grinder. And in the long run, and if the opponent is not doing the same thing, suddenly he's losing mechs. Because all of yours are pummeling the same guy, tearing one guy out. Your guy is getting ripped up, but you moved him off the side, so he's not dying. Now, you could have an opponent like, I'm going to continue to focus on that guy. I'm going to take him down. Okay, go ahead. I'm still having my entire force going after one possibly your fresh mech another one and just ripping them into pieces and they may want to chase him down and, and continue the fight trying to get around him or whatever that's where your follow-on forces are going to be acting as a screen for these guys and you just rotate them around now if they want to try to get into their face and like i said try to kick punch or whatever they have to go through your gauntlet of guys to get there and that means that they're going to be susceptible to being hit and punched because if that's the first guy that you rotated out what's their inclination oh we want to go after that guy so if that's the first guy you got out of the fight they may focus on that guy and go after him what's that do for you all of the rest of your force can either get into point blank range be able to punch and kick yourself out of their arcs or you move maneuver somebody so they can do a torso twist and hammer somebody in the back where they have the least amount of armor so you're what you're doing is is you're doing the best you can to mitigate the damage to you over time you're going to still be taking damage but you're going to spread it out over your entire force and keeping your guys in the fight while they are dying in droves, okay? And once that start that ball starts moving, that you start you kick that one boulder down the hill or down the mountain, it starts picking up steam and it starts to steamroll and eventually they're gonna be looking at it going, Okay, this is not working out the way I want it. I'm losing guys right and left. And then you start to have more of an advantage. And the more advantage you get, with less mechs that you're facing, the less damage you're going to take. And you're, and it's just it. It's game over. Alright. If you got any questions down below, if you have a different kind of tactic that you like to use, let me know. Put it down below and uh, see what I can do and uh, maybe make a, a, a video or use it in my next game. Alright, this is Hellcrux, and you have a great day.